Okay. Uh, no, hello, good. guys. So, yeah, we have a small change in the schedule, as you probably already noticed. We replaced one speech with uh, probably more interesting thing. It's going to be a panel discussion about future Java, about current state of Java, and we have here quite many clever and experienced guys in the field. Uh, so I hope that's going to be interesting. Uh, so uh, I have a set of questions that I want to ask you guys. And uh, uh, after after we have more or less start, 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 start the discussion over, then we'll also give a chance to the audience to uh, ask your questions if you want. So uh, the first question that, that I have is, uh, well, Java 8 is already out for maybe more, more than a year. And uh, what do you think, what is the level of adoption of uh, Java 8, of Lambda expressions, of uh, Java 8 features in new projects and old projects and are in, overall in the industry? <laughs> I think it's low. <laughs> okay. No, really. Uh, we ask it every time. And uh, the level of adoption of 7 is not very high, and uh, but I think that uh, eight has good chances because people do love features in eight, and um, well, you see that Oracle uh, releases Java, and it releases updates and uh, new versions, so the uh, situation should get better. Okay. From from our point of view, uh, we see what kind of versions our clients use, and uh, over the years we have seen how they migrate, how fast they migrate, and Java 8 so far was was the fastest release, basically by migration. So once it was out, uh, in a few months we already had a good share of users using Java like Java Java 8. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> And and uh, currently, if uh, if I check the stats, probably in, in the product, maybe I will see uh, like uh, about fifty percent or so. Okay. Uh, but it's it's a very biased uh, stats because it's just one product, and I I can't tell for everyone. Okay. Uh, I can speak only based on the Tiopke index in Google. And uh, it is clearly seen that uh, with, the, with the release of the Java 8, the interest of developers to Java started again to increase because years before it was declining. And uh, definitely uh, the lambdas and stream support is the main selling point and of Java 8 and the most uh, uh, most used as a dri uh, most driver to to adopt Java Java eight, and uh, we personally not in our production now starting new projects on Linux eight, mm -hmm. and slowly migrate uh, legacy projects to the Java eight GDK G G Java runtime environment. I mean. Okay, I guess it's getting harder. To <laughs> with every speaker to find something new, uh, but yeah, yeah, cool yeah good, um, <laughs> good to be in the middle. Uh, no, but building on the on the that you start every project with Java eight, I think that's the only way to go, and you should probably be fired if you use anything lower than Java eight in a new project right now, uh, because there are very very few reasons why you should do that. I mean, maybe if there are no packages for your operating system, or you have like an application server that doesn't support Java eight but then you might have a different problem. So otherwise, stick with Java 8. Yeah, and then speaking of that, what do you think are the most, the biggest problems with with adopting Java 8? What, what's stopping people or yeah, so blocking people? Like I have that? a bit of an operat operation background and it was like, for example, Ubuntu 14.04, uh, you don't have the Java 8 by default. You need external packages, but they are available. They are good, they are solid. You can use them, it's not an excuse anymore. If you're on something really old, like 12.04 on Ubuntu, there are still packages, still no excuse. So you need like some really shitty operating system, I guess, to have 
a proper excuse. And other than that, uh, I don't see any reasons why you should hold back. So um, I, I primarily work with Apache Camel for integration and kind of stuff. And we do have end users there that are kind of old. <laughs> Um, so what we see is that as a mix of users that are still running on Java 1.7, so they will be concerned that if you know Camel, for example, is uh, not supporting uh, 1.7 uh, anymore. But um, definitely, as the other guy is saying, that Java 8 has all the cool stuff that new developers want, want to use, so they are also pushing for that, and we are also pushing that in, in for example, with Camel or whatnot. So I think, you know, with there has been a long time since there was some cool stuff coming into Java itself. We have to go back to Java 5 with the annotations and whatnot, and then 6 and 7 came, came out, and people were just, uh, who cares, right? So then now with 8, with the lambdas and the, the rise of the functional programming, every sort of uh, old-school Java developer is sort of coming back from the bushes and want to be developing with these new stuff. So that's a great rise to uh, adopting Java. But there's also this problem with binary compatibility. So when you use the lambdas and what, you cannot run it on an older JVM. You cannot run with the older libraries and whatnot. So there's a new challenge, I think, there. You might have to align your Java libraries to be on Java 1.8 only. And then I take maybe some of your thunder. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do work for Red Hat, and we do have some application servers and whatnot. I do not work with them personally, but we I think there, there's the side of the enterprise customers wanting to use Java Enterprise Application Servers, and there are some, you can say, slack behind of those where they need to support old specs of the application, Java Enterprise spec that is sort of Java 1.7 and whatnot. So in that light, we, we have sort of like old customers that are kind of behind the curve. They're not uh, catching up with the latest stuff. So we kind of have a, a wide span there. And I think that's the challenge as well to sort of support both sides of the business. But personally, as you said, go for 1.8. It's a cool, pretty cool stuff. And it's, you know, make Java cool again. We don't have to use Scala or <laughs> some other language. <laughs> wow. Now, I have a lot to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you, really. <laughs> uh, so let me start first with uh, really answering the question. Uh, what is the adoption rate? Uh, these guys have numbers because they run the survey. Uh, this guy has backing of a large company. Uh, this guy has experience in a number of companies, sim similar with this guy. I most likely can answer only from the recruitment and pretty much Polish perspective. So in Poland, Java 8 is rather fast fast on track to be adopted. Pretty much every new project I'm hearing about runs Java 8. Pretty much every new project that a company I'm actually helping with, I'm a consultant, uh, wants Java 8. Every new training I'm requested to make, Java 8. So I would say adoption rate is high. Uh, it's definitely higher than Java 7 and previous versions because of the features. Uh, the backward compa compatibility is another reason for good adoption. On the other hand, it's actually something that gutted Lambda and functional programming in Java 8 quite severely. Uh, to sum it up real quickly, uh, one thing I, d I cannot agree, if you want uh, to be functional on Java 7, you use Java Slang, or you use uh, Lambdas for Java. There is a library especially aimed at actually delivering functional cap capabilities on uh, Java 7. And uh, if you actually are afraid that uh, you're using old collections API and thus new API in streams and, and lambdas will not work well together because backward compatibility and we cannot change old collections, then use uh, Java Slang, which introduces a new collections which are pretty much geared and created only for functional programming. So it's kind of similar situation we had between Java 4 and Java 5. I have a backport <laughs> libraries to work with old collections and uh, not generic collections. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Java 8 is already released more, more than a year uh, ago. But I guess next year Java 8 will become old news because Java 9 is coming out. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, what, what do you expect from Java 9? What, what do you, how, how is it anything good coming in there? or? I'm holding my breath that they won't actually uh, botch and save to white box transformation. Uh, I don't know if you know, guys, but there is this really nice and kind of 
hidden API called Unsafe, which is which was done in some times, and it allows you to really done do nitty gritty details like, for example, direct memory access or off heap structures and all that. A number of actually libraries uses it, and Oracle already announced that they will actually kill it but they will introduce new things in its stead uh, and the new things are called white box. So there is a specification on about white box uh, on OpenJDK sites and while they do try to actually introduce every feature that Unsafe uh, was delivering uh, and is delivering, I don't, uh, I haven't yet checked on them since like three months ago and then they were quite away from being a full list. So my number one worry and uh, hope is please do not botch it, please do not botch it. Uh, the other thing is uh, Java is kind of making a compromise, Java Oracle is kind of making a compromise on uh, backward compatibility. Like they want to have a slick runtime, so they are introducing the jigsaw. And with that, there will be a number of interesting uh, complexities added to overall delivery of Java applications, because if you will want a, run, a slick runtime, you will actually have to uh, make sure that your software can handle it. So all the dependencies and all that, you need to be aware of it. And in number of legacy applications that I've seen, dependencies are mm, like black magic. Here be dragons, and uh, we kind of depend on this and that version of the same library. And I think the other dependencies also depend on some other version of this library, but we never went deep enough to untangle this. And with that, yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, but still, what Philip said, uh, perhaps in a year. <laughs> For now, even I think uh, JEE8 ain't really fully 8. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so I think Jigsaw is sort of like um, a scary tale for some people and as you mentioned, the good cause for that. And then there's a whole new dimension suddenly introducing in Java, which we haven't heard before. Before, the dependencies were, you, you, you had a flat class loader, you had some Java files, and then you call the compiler, and then magically it compiles it. And if everything was OK, then yeah, it works. You hope so. Uh, maybe at runtime, you get some error exceptions you are used to, you know, okay, track down these errors and trying to you know align versions with dependencies and whatnot. Now suddenly, the uh, the, the notion of, of modules and whatnot comes out of the box with Jigsaw in the JVM itself that you know, sort of entails not the JDK, uh, not only the JDVK, but also how you program uh, with these modules. And I think that's a new dimension that Java developers need to embrace and understand. And then there's a vast ecosystem of existing libraries that might need to be adjusted to that. And there has been a module system out there for many, many years as well called OSDI. And I do have one leg in that uh, camp because uh, the company I used to work for called FuseSource, we had an application server that is based on OSDI. And what I've seen is that it's black and white. If it is either, then it really works, then it really works well. And if it doesn't work, it really works bad. There's no middle ground where it just works okay. So to either situation, if something just breaks and doesn't work, you have to spend a lot of time figuring out what the hell is going on and a new dimension of thinking. And in, with OSGI, it was too fine grain about the modularity and whatnot. It has to go on a very low level, whereas used as a Java developer, you are used to think about maybe dependencies as a dependency to Spring or some other library. And maybe with Maven dependencies are or a Gradle, whatnot, uh, at that level. But now you suddenly have to, on the Peggle level and whatnot, that's a, as, a, as a level that goes one or two steps further down. And that is very, in the mind of the human mind, very hard to comprehend as well. Um, so I fear that it, all these new changes coming with Java, with Java 8, with the lambdas and whatnot, and suddenly with the new uh, Jigsaw thing, that is too many things at once. What I would like to see, maybe there's a question about that, but I would really like to see a, a slimmed down JVM itself that is fast to boot up that you can use on the container platforms because it's gonna get its ass kicked by other libraries like Go and whatnot that is really fast on these things. But Java is pretty slow there and pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty big, uh, big. So I would rather see in that area in, in, instead of trying to push this jigsaw uh, too soon. 
okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, whatever is left now. So I must admit personally, like I'm, I haven't really warmed up to Java 9 yet. So I, I mean, yeah, I have kind of the feeling that it's like a bit lost in the discussion. Like, should unsafe be, be removed? Should it be changed? Should it be left uh, as it is? And I'm not really having the feeling that it's really progressing the language at, as in general. It's just like you have l your little battles you're fighting over and yeah, I, I don't really see the progress. So at the moment I'm a bit like, okay, let's see, let's wait. And yeah, as I said, uh, the release date is also something whenever it will come. And I, I think like if there's something that's fairly stable, I'll have a proper look. But at the moment I'm like, okay, ha have fun. Let's see what comes afterwards. And at the moment I'm happy with Java 8 and or even all the stuff if you have the libraries to support functional stuff. So I'm happy there. Java 9, let's see. Uh, well, just to bring some more fruit to the discussion, w what do you think maybe uh, one, one Java 9 comes out, Jigsaw, what, what would be the main reason uh, businesses will start switching to that? What, what, what would be the reason for, 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 for companies to start thinking this about This is the question to the right person. <laughs> uh, Actually, at the current at the current state of Java nine, uh, as a as a, I don't see much reasons to switch to it, because it only brings a complexity in operations with its jigsaw feature, so we must uh, rewrite all the code, and it. At the present moment, uh, gives only some um, not very not game-changing feature in the into the language. I mean that are really useful for for development. There are some progress in the language, but the, 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 this is not of of the same scale like the streams and lambdas, for example. It's like some small features, small enhancements, and so on. So. I personally think that the adoption rate of nine, if it stays as uh, at its current plans, I don't know, will be not so fast as as as, as with eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thomas has some comment. Sorry for stealing the mic. <laughs> um, in order to, for me, the movement behind Jigsaw would be about uh, virtualization and the amount of data you need to have. Because if you start up a new virtual machine container, whatever, then if you want Java there, currently you load a number of libraries, which you frankly don't need, like AWT, Swing, whatever. Uh, and if you need the uh, bandwidth, and it, you can actually have this another layer of complexity, but which will result in really slick runtime for Java, then that might be a good idea. Though, in general, I do agree with you, because for me, 9 so far seems to be the most interesting when we take a look at the JVM level, when there are talks about data types. For example, uh, to have really mm, something better than primitives in Java, or talks between IBM and Oracle, whether there will be a better way for actually accessing the native heap from Java heap. Things like that, which for actually progressing the language, what Philip said, uh, may not mean well, like on the language level, but they actually can give us something like invoke dispatch, uh, invoke dynamic date for Java 7, which is the proliferation of pretty much every other language on the JVM. My, f my two cents. Um, I would add to the complexity bit here. Um, Everybody have seen probably those talks by Mark Reinhold about uh, Jigsaw and the motivation behind it. And usually it starts from the jar hell or class path hell. I would ask from the audience actually here who actually experienced the class path hell. Not that many. Do you think it will be easier to resolve the class path hell with modules? With module path hell? No. <laughs> it will be much more complex. Uh, myself about, like, my opinion about Java 9 is uh, I don't really care about Jigsaw myself. Uh, I'm more excited about the performance improvements, especially on strings. So uh, with this, I would probably give the mic to the experts. 
well maybe I just know a little bit more and yeah I totally agree about uh, performance improvements that's a big expectations because uh, <clears throat> there was some performance work in general uh, for nine so that's one of aspects of releasing and JDK and yeah compressed strings and uh, string candy can get is a cool uh, stuff you should love it no really in production uh, that's absolutely true um, another interesting thing is that we all you know discuss jigsaw and uh, other big features that are really big features on the scale of JDK and you all should understand that uh, doing such a big feature requires a lot of resources and it's not a scale even of one release so you should understand that there are a lot of interesting projects going on like Alhala and so on yeah and resources that are currently spent to jigsaw and other big features or not so big features will be at least we hope it will be spare so we, and after nine you can expect some more interesting things mm. right and for big features yeah I, again i will agree with anton because uh, there is strong motivation uh, behind uh, jigsaw and uh, yeah I, I disagree that it uh, doesn't solve the problem but yeah, yeah so. I guess an, another motivation to get, uh, behind jigsaw is that to, to make Java more multiple from than it is now to yeah if you look at current sources they look, they look more pretty <laughs> my, um, my personal opinion is that jigsaw is just a pre-work for the real stuff. Because mm. if you want the slick runtime, uh, just separating the runtime to models is not enough. We need uh, AOT, we need other stuff. Yeah. Okay, we already mentioned uh, this during your, your discussions, but uh, what do you think, because in, like last year, uh, the landscape of uh, an alternative languages for GVM changed a lot, I would say. Uh, Groovy has was dropped by Pivotal and now moved to Apache. A few days ago, TypeSafe announced to become Lightband, which may mean that Scala has uh, less focus now. Uh, Kotlin was really like having version 1.0 official release. So things are happening. So w w what's your opinion about how, how Java 8, 9 will continue supporting uh, alternative languages and w w what's the direction in, the, in general? Well, for me, uh, the answer is clear that, yeah, here is uh, VM and it supports any VM enabled language. And no change here. Um, an interesting question of what will happen, for example, to JavaScript support or our dynamic languages. Because, you know, uh, we need uh, strong feedback on. Uh, dynamic languages execution on VM platform because yeah it, it's a long time since uh, 7 was released but still there are things that can be refined Java all the way <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, I think uh, having multiple languages many languages on JVM is actually beneficial because we can get all kind of uh, improvements just by getting the feedback from the language developers uh, that's it. Every language has its own, you know, nice things like Groovy, for instance, you write 1.5 and it's big decimal instead of double. Very convenient to work with if you have to write a financial, like, Elvis operator. Yeah, it's it's a nice one. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so so there are nice features and if you're, like, uh, getting most of those new features there, yeah, go, go with that language that you like. Why not? Uh, it's just the question then about the ecosystem, whether you have all the proper tools and then can you maintain the Groovy dynamic language and so on. Have anyone maintained a big project in Groovy? How happy are you? <laughs> Very happy? 
Okay, superb, one at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that guy organized a groovy conference. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, that uh, GVM is a piece of art, and it allows developers, the developers of alternative language, to focus on the language than on execution. And maybe this is what now ha happened in the automotive industry when one company develops a platform for. A uh, of the vehicle and other uses that platform, reuse that platform. Maybe uh, the GVM here is like the platform to build new languages, and maybe new languages will be built simpler and faster and more qualitative for the, uh, for the programmers, for the end users. Yeah, but, uh, but at some point we had very like uh, huge uh, jump in uh, the usage of uh, alternative languages for JVM because Java 6, Java 7 was kind of delayed in the release. Now, when with features of Java 8, it seems that the alternative usage is going down a bit. Uh, do you think it's going to change in the future, or how? It it depends. Uh, th th this I I see this process as a competitive. Con uh, like a competition between uh, language designers of Java and alternative languages. Whichever designs the language best, <laughs> that company will win. So, so, But anyway, Java will have a preference as a, as a, as a natural language for the platform. Yeah, I think it's a major testimony just to the JVM platform that the tool, you have the tooling and the operational guys are very happy with it. And then the developers can kind of put their sugary syntax on top, whatever you prefer. Uh, even though we very much agree on the sugary syntax and we fight many wars over it, tabs versus spaces, it's just a minority against that. Uh, but yeah, so I think this is a very good sign and also like to have this kind of internal competition within the JVM platform. Uh, to push the, the languages and each one influences the others is a good thing. And I, I'm not sure if like Java 8 would have looked like the same if there hasn't been Scala and Scala had been, has been quite successful. And now there's kind of little less need of Scala, but yeah, Scala guys will disagree. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, Java made uh, lambdas popular by not having them, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but now they're here. And yeah, I guess everybody's happy. <laughs> so I, I think that like the future for the JVM is looking bright and also for Java. I'm not sure about the other languages like Kotlin is getting a lot of love at the moment, but maybe it will fade again. Let's see. Yeah, um, you have to admire that the JVM itself is a very cool piece of technology that uh, very many bright people has been working on for so many years that you don't throw that out of the door or you cannot build that easily yourself. And it's uh, just awesome that there has been so many different languages on the JVM itself. And as other people have said that I think uh, Scala and Groovy and Kotlin and whatnot has helped pushing the good ideas and, and practice them out there in different communities and then getting sort of a common sense of what that might see out in the Java itself. I love that they are sort of being a bit restrictive on just jumping on board immediately because, you know, we know how there are in terms of when it's just in the Java language itself, it's very hard to get rid of. So I think that they took the, the right course of waiting a bit and, and I think uh, when the Lambdas came into the language, it was the right time. The only thing that some people might say that the releases between 6 and 7 and 8 it was rather long. But, you know, there was also a, a certain company buying another company and whatnot. Um, but what I see now as well is that, you know, there's a different way of where you run your applications, uh, in certainly with the rise of containers and cloud and technologies like that, where you sort of have a hybrid environment where you run Java side by side with node and .NET and whatnot, and Go pro, uh, binaries and whatnot. So I will like to see that 
the, the JVM self and, and other people, Thomas has said, and others have said that the slick JVM is sort of like the, the, you can sort of customize and cut down the, the footprint of the JVM itself so that it's more, um, it's more compact and you can run more Java language, Java applications in the cloud. That's where I'm seeing that Java itself has to, or the JVM itself has to be pushed towards, not as much of new features in the language itself. It's more that Oracle and these guys, they have to rise to the challenge of the cloud and make the Java, the JVM, small and lean and really awesome to run there. Then we, as the developer, we can continue write our applications in whatever syntax sugar we like, whether it's tabs and spaces and curly parentheses on, without doubts, and we can run it on an awesome container in the cloud. Just plus 100 to that and not package, just package Java EC into Docker, right? And call it uh, Java for cloud. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that it's so bad. Uh, because uh, what uh, do you measure? Are you going to save uh, disk space that you can actually share for JDK packaging? Or if you're going to save some footprint and to save footprint, you should use different strategies. So features like uh, AppCDS and AOT will bring you uh, shared artifacts that save your footprint, not your mythic mythical disk space, but some direct costs. Network bandwidth and startup time. I believe that would be what you're actually getting in addition to disk, disk space. And this ties with what Anton previously said, that it's actually a middle stage before something else. Uh, getting back to the question at hand. Uh, hands up, who here heard and knows what Frega is? Okay, yeah, I can raise my hand too. Uh, for, the, uh, for the rest of the room, uh, Frega is Haskell on JVM. And its inter intermediate representation is Java. Uh, the fact that we actually, that we have JVM opened to other languages uh, was actually a very smart move because that way people who could perhaps uh, gravitate toward other language are staying on the JVM, which is incredibly powerful move economically for Oracle. Now with JVM being owned by Oracle, pretty much everybody else needs to still play at least somewhat by Oracle rules. Uh, now, everybody here can go home and actually write his own language, but uh, to actually have this language adopted is a lot of hard work. And then once the language gains some traction, which means that uh, language author spent a lot of time working on the language, then he spent a lot of time promoting the language, and then he spent a lot of time working on tooling for the language because Java people are lazy people, because they have excellent tools. And some of authors of those tools are in the room. <laughs> no. And with that, it's actually really hard for your language to be promoted, and JVM gets you a very fast start to it, because the number of mechanisms are already there. You need to plug in your language and just build up from this. Uh, so the fact that we are kind of what was only Java now is kind of cannibalized, for lack of a better word, with Groovy, Scala, Frege, and uh, Kotlin, and Salem, and a number of others. Uh, yeah, it kind of lessens the shares for Java, but it increases the shares for JVM. So to answer whether this was a good move or bad move, one would need to actually calculate how both are against each other. Uh, and with that, I'm actually coming to the last part of my answer. So uh, having all those new functional languages, uh, in most cases, uh, has one more requirement, that their code interoperates with Java code, which is that you get Java and pretty much anything else. So for Oracle, this means that when they notice that, oh my god, this XYZ language is so cool that Java cannot possibly compete, let's just freeze Java indefinitely 
on this very stage that we are at and shift resources to actually working on this new language or on coming up with a new language which will be even better. That's it. Yeah, and speaking about like adoption uh, level of uh, JVM in general, do you think uh, that in industry uh, as a whole, uh, is the adoption of JVM and Java languages, uh, JVM languages is growing or declining? Definitely growing, though I would be hard pressed to answer that it's growing to the point where those languages will become mainstream or they will just found their own niches and stay there. Yeah, but I mean, not, not the, the not, not the JVM language, but other ecosystems like uh, JavaScript, uh, Go, Rust, do they take some shares? Uh, and Big data and cloud. Those are two primary drivers for other languages because uh, both require different tooling for solving problems which are actually placed uh, before a big data or cloud developer. So a cloud developer like, for example, Quentin, who is somewhere here on the, uh, uh, in a conference, who's running his own uh, platform as a service company, uh, and he needs different sort of syntaxes and uh, tools for his everyday problems. And this means that, for example, uh, he's enamored with Rust. Yeah, and he believes that uh, it's a very nice type safe C, so to say. And uh, you get the power of C with s without some of the uh, shoot yourself in the knee by accident in C. And uh, the other part would be that uh, with big data, you need some of the other languages. Uh, if you, for example, know Project Euler, this is a website where you actually, when you can solve different problems, be become bet a better programmer this way. Those problems mostly are mathematical in nature. And uh, yeah, if you take a look at how much uh, you need uh, to actually code in other languages versus, for example, R or MATLAB, uh, you can see that there are languages which are excellent for some purposes. So that would sum up my answer to make it really brief this time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like the, the Hobbit or there's one ring to rule them all. There's no one language to rule them all. Um, I think the, the IT in, uh, is growing as with the utilization of, of computing and whatnot. We see IoT, big data, we, we see, you know, software crawl. I think some people say software is eating the world. And we see a lot of new talent coming to the industry that are not a strong programming background, but there's a demand for being able to, for them to be productive and also use different sort of programming languages where you might not need to use a compiler or, and these kind of things. So I think there's a huge uptake on other languages that are because of, let's say, less talent people or people that are in different kind of background than the Java developers we are. And that's why, for example, who will actually thought that Node, for example, was become so, up, so much uptake just five, 10 years ago, or JavaScript is actually suddenly now an okay language to use. <laughs> Uh, even though <laughs> trying to debug and, and fix JavaScript uh, box in JavaScript is, is painful. Uh, but some people just get the dust stuff done and then there's people that can, you know, with the internet you can Google many things and people just copy that and start using that. So there's also probably a less quality concerns from some companies that just let those people do that and, and just because it seems like it's working and it goes into production and it, that's it. So. We will see these different languages live in production side by side, but what we're gonna probably gonna see, and I think, is that we sort of seeing more like a unified platform that the operation guy can sort of manage and run these things. So we see Java running next to .NET and Node and whatnot, and and with the cloud technologies. So there's an uptake in Java itself because it's uh, such an awesome language, but there's uh, many other friends coming together with that, and we have a moving towards more like a, a, an operation team that can actually manage anything. Yeah, I would be a bit cautious about the, the overall growth of the JVM because it's like we're all kind of in the Java bubble <laughs> and it's like everybody's saying, yeah, Java is so great and everybody's using Java because it's, yeah, we're all Java developers. And you'll have pretty much the same in the JavaScript, PHP, whatever world and everybody is telling each other, yeah, it's so good. Like PHP 7 changed everything and now PHP is coming back and yeah, so I think it's like you're a bit in the bubble. Um, yeah, and the second thing is like, yeah, the polyglot paradigm that throw in as many programming languages as you want is 
pretty nice for developers because you work on something for half a year and it's fun. And then the ops guys will need to deal with it for 10 years and it's probably much less fun. <laughs> uh, especially if it was like some JavaScript framework which has been unmaintained for five years and some obscure stuff nobody else is using, try Googling for those error messages. So I think it's nice for developers, but we need to be a bit cautious just throwing in the hot new stuff in if, unless we're a startup and everything is rewritten next year anyway, or it doesn't matter if whatever breaks, use whatever you want then. But otherwise, if it will run in production for a few years, I would be a bit more cautious. Well, um, uh, I think that GVM installations in number will, ri will increase just because the number of computers in the world are increasing. <laughs> 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 and and so somebody um, wants to install it on the smart cards even. So yes, it will. Uh, about the market share, um, it's hard to tell actually because there is a too strong uh, flows in the programming world. Uh, one is uh, about the Java and GVM and another are uh, strong uh, C lovers, and <laughs> they they will program on anything but Java. And so, who will win? I don't know. But anyway, any competition is uh, good for the, the industry. And there has been one number that has been uh, very uh, suspiciously stable over the years: nine millions. Uh, Every time we hear about Java, it was like more than 10 years I've been hearing this number. There is 9 million Java developers. It should, you know, spark some BS detector <laughs> in your head. But last, last year it actually changed. It has been 10. <laughs> so it's growing. That's good. Uh, another part is that well, probably the adoption should grow like steadily and slowly because uh, it's it takes not that much time to actually implement the, the program or write it, but it, most effort goes to maintenance. And Java is just the sweet spot for, for that. It, it has this like very simple syntax and operates well with tools. And that's why you probably if you if you have like a business that should last, not pivot every time with the startups but last, then you probably go with Java. Yeah, I think that, of course, you can pick uh, any suitable language to solve uh, any particular task that you have. But what we will see probably is a growth of uh, platforms, not only JVM as a platform, but other platforms and not necessarily uh, VMs, but something. Because, for example, you need uh, cloud and cloud providers uh, grow. Number of uh, them increases and number of uh, machines, installations grows. And such kind of thing requires some platform that is easy for language developers and for users, develop for developer users. Uh, to use. Okay. Yeah, we're slowly, well, actually, quickly running out of time. Uh, one last question before we give some time for the audience as well. Uh, what do you suggest Java developers to learn or to focus on in in this year or next year, in in regards to Java, of course? Well, I think the list of jobs targeted. <laughs> <laughs> you should learn it. Of course. I should probably say go download Cherubon. Um But probably learning another language that is not familiar to you is probably a good thing. It's just in, like, you know, learning something new is always good. Or well, learning how to use the streams and lambdas right, not overusing them, because this is shiny new features and you want it everywhere. 
and there should be balance of course as a new to any technology it has its spot where it should be used and areas where we should not use it so i think during the year there will be a lot of uh Code refactored from lambdas and streams back to for loops. <laughs> uh, so that's to try to use the instrument you have now, Java 8. I'd say get rid of the ops people and get on the DevOps train because ops people are a pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amen. Um, well, um, you still. Just definitely be, uh, um, be aware of the cloud train and how that can change your, let's say, your job and your infrastructure and your company and whatnot. Um, but in terms of Java itself, then as the, these guys tell you to, to learn the new features in, in 1.8, um, the streams and the lambdas and whatnot. And probably you should not change every for loop into the streaming APIs and go crazy with the for each and whatnot that it provides, you know, you know, you, we, maybe you can write Java code with Java 8 that is hard to understand that as you could with Scala. So, you know, be a bit cautious and, and do some practice there. So, because, you know, as we have heard here, it's not always about writing the code, but it's also about maintenance and the next guy that comes in and look at your code three years later and has to do a change. And then if you have go crazy like a Scala guy, then nobody can figure out what the hell it does. So, you know, I'm just worried that, you know, if people go overboard with the new features in, in Java 1.8. Dear audience, <laughs> I have a sincere wish. Please expand your horizons. Get out of your comfort zone. Pick an area that interests you and learn something of it. Databases are cool. Being a DevOps is cool. Uh, turning to the cloud and making your problem uh, raining problems, it's also very cool. Going into microservices, which will tell you how actually you, you res lessen the complexity of your monolith and now you increase the complexity of your connections between microservices, pretty cool, I, I say. So pick an area and just learn something. Thank you. Thank I, you. I guess we have a time for one question, two questions, two. Anybody? Hi. <coughs> if uh, Oracle would ask you for one feature in Java language from other languages uh, to put into Java 9, what would be this one feature from other languages? Type inference. Uh, I don't know if you ever had the pleasure of actually watching uh, someone with functional background trying to learn Java. When this person discovers that, for example, compiler does not know what a type this object has, it's like, how it can be? It's like, so obvious. So, type inference. Um, make a Java lang unsafe and let people do unsafe things where, you, where they want to do unsafe things. <laughs> my, my dream was about having properties in Java, but it's not going to happen ever. So, but I can live with that. Well, I don't personally have uh, any favorite feature that's required to import. But I think that uh, that's a good question because uh, you should vote for it, actually. And that's what Oracle wants. Um, maybe a little bit late to the party, but for many, many years, I'd love to have the null safe operator that Groovy has in Java. I don't know how many code lines I've written if x equals not null and something like that going down in this, this thing. But you know, maybe some people tell me to use optional and streams and whatnot. But you know, typing optional is also yeah, long. We're actually we're running out of time. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much for your answers and opinions. Thank you. Give a big round of thank applause. you.